One of the reasons I, I believe we're seeing a lot of this uh, increase in antibiotic resistance in marine organisms is because in part, a lot of the antibiotics that we're using on a day-to-day -day basis ultimately end up in the sea, either through the sewer systems or through the drain, everything, the washing of the streets. All of these antibiotics we use, whether it's in the agricultural industry or in the human industry, are ultimately ending there. That's affecting them the same way it affects us uh, with, with the um, antibiotic-resistant bacteria. The human body reacts, uh, it tries to heal itself the minute you have a wound. So for instance, uh, let's just take an example. You have an open wound and you go into the marine environment and you come into contact with one of these resist resistant bacteria. They now have access to your system. If you are immunocompromised or if this is a truly potent bacteria, you could be in serious trouble because if it's not diagnosed quickly, some of these bacteria can become almost lethal within days if, if not treated properly and treatments are becoming harder and harder to find because they're resistant. The full understanding of coral disease is unknown. We don't know why, for instance, 80 percent of the hard coral in the Caribbean are dead or dying. We, we, we really don't know. There are a lot of hypotheses out there. But some of it is because the bacterial micro, microbes in the environment have changed and have become resistant to how corals would deal with this issue normally. So for instance, if corals have their own way of keeping themselves healthy, but are now confronted with novel pathogenic bacteria that are resistant to these methods, um, they're now susceptible and they're dying. And um, stopping that is going to be a very difficult thing to do. One of the things that we discovered a little bit through serendipity or through accident uh, was we were studying coral disease and these major reefs that are dead and when you have a bleak picture of everything dead, but all of a sudden you come upon a pristine sponge. It's happy, it's healthy, it's thriving, and it begs the question, why can this thing survive in an otherwise dead world? And it's really the same issue that we're describing. It had or has some ability to confront and deal with antibiotic and a fouling, it doesn't allow other organisms to encrust upon itself, but it also deals with the bacterial infections. Remember that sponges live in the marine world. Um, I like to call them microbial soup. They are under constant battery of bacterial infections, trying to come in and, and start their own, own life there. Sponge has to deal with that, and a particular sponge that we're working with has learned to do this very well. The marine world is a huge what I call the world's largest untapped pharmacy. Um, only about 1% of the bacteria that we're looking at that actually synthesize antibiotics are actually culturable in the lab, that we can actually take out of the marine environment and mass culture. When you think about that, we've got a host of compounds we haven't even begun to look at. And we're really only limited by our imagination. That, um, we're going to have to learn how to mass culture and isolate these compounds, but they're out there. And uh, as I tell everyone, we, we haven't we haven't scratched the surface of what's out there for us. Um, and it's not just antibiotic resistance. We're finding anti-cancer uh, compounds, antifungal compounds, and even what I would call more commercial viable compounds like pigments for paints and new biofuels. Uh, we, we've just begun to look at the ocean as the big grocery store that really is for us.